gain attention. No. Katie Zahn is one eyewitness that has agreed to a polygraph test. Prior to this year, did you ever deliberately lie to somebody who trusted you? No. Are you lying about seeing those upright hairy creatures by that creek? No. The results are revealing. The conclusion on Katie Zahn's polygraph was no deception indicated. It's my opinion that she was being truthful about seeing three uh, animals walking on their hind legs uh, down at the base of that bridge by the creek. The polygraph corroborates her story to a point. However, it does not rule out misidentification. Like Zahn, hunting guy Don Young has had encounters with a beast. One was in the summer of 2006 while hunting in southern Wisconsin. Well, it was uh, hunting season, gun deer season. And like usual, I walk through the woods next to my house to get to this little road called Mount Bailey Road. And looked out, seen something hunched over. Thought it was maybe a black bear because it had uh, brownish, brownish black colorations to it. The thing that I seen was at least six and a half, seven feet tall, extremely bulky. Arms were extremely heavily built, low hung, had uh, human looking feet. This thing had jumped a 12 foot leap with only two to three steps. Well, the main reason I didn't shoot at this thing was one, it wasn't bear season, it was deer season. So if it was a bear, I would have been a poacher if I would have shot it because I didn't have no bear license in, in the first place. Two, if it was what I had suspected at the time as being a guy in a monkey suit, well then it would have been murder. Spruce swamp. That should be a good area in there. Spruce swamp. Well, you lead the way. Van and Young are now in their second day, crisscrossing well-worn game trails. Yeah. Be a good passage area over there. Bottleneck. The most logical explanation for Zahn and Young's account is misidentification, since the woods of Wisconsin are teeming with wildlife. But Godfrey believes that doesn't explain the sightings. Anybody who drives around much in Wisconsin has seen so many deer and so many bear and these other creatures that um, they would have a very hard time mistaking something like that for a completely unknown animal. Dr. Bambinek says many eyewitness accounts suggest it's a black bear or timber wolf temporarily standing on its hind legs to peer over an object like a tree trunk or tall grass. But if Young's account of a creature jumping a ditch on its hind legs is to be believed, there is a problem. One of the reasons I don't think people are seeing bears is there's a very different image out in the forest. I mean, they can get up on, on two feet if they want to grab something up in a tree, and but if they walk on two feet, they do it for a short period of time, but it's a very clumsy, lumbering type of walk. Not the kind that's seen with these creatures. Also, they have sloping shoulders, their legs are much shorter, and they just are, would go down on all fours. If not a bear, then what? Hard evidence is lacking. It's really stuck together. Linda Godfrey collects more than just stories. In 2005, Godfrey received a hair sample from an anonymous woman who claimed an unowned beast was on her roof. When it jumped, a piece of fur was torn off on the metal roofing. This is a piece of some kind of fur that was identified by a wildlife biologist as uh, possibly some kind of canid fur. He didn't know what kind. Godfrey sent the hair sample to Dr. Lynn Rogers, a wildlife biologist in Ely, Minnesota, who knows every creature that lurks there. Oh, this one puzzled me at first because it didn't match any of the things I thought it might be skunk, mink, 
bear, coyote, uh, but it wasn't any of those, it wasn't any North American native animal that I'm used to looking at. By comparing attributes such as thickness, ring patterns, and other characteristics, experts can often pinpoint the exact species that the hair specimen is derived from. DNA analysis can be reserved for the most puzzling cases, but in this case, DNA will not be needed. This is nothing other than just plain old domestic cat. Hunter Don Young says he knows what he saw, and it's no cat. I had a ground blind that was on a hill. At the bottom of the hill, I noticed the back, buttocks, and leg of an upright animal, like, well, it was covered with hair. So I hear a growl. It's like, a, oh, oh. So then there's this maple tree that was out there. Started whipping back and forth, but it was so violently whipping it back and forth that the leaves had all come off of this tree. So I got out of there. Abenek and Young Search is about to turn something up. Don and I went out to a place where he had a sighting. We were going along a ridge, and a pileated woodpecker just started going crazy. He was doing an alarm call. But this went on for five minutes. And both of us thought, this is pretty unusual. Usually they stop and fly away, but it had not seen us. Walked a little bit, saw the pileated woodpecker, and it saw us, and it was looking the other way. It turned, saw us, and flew away. Don started walking and I thought, well, why don't we check out what it was doing? It was down in this swamp. Whoa! Ooh, that's a huge bed. Really huge. The Midwest has a long history of an unknown upright walking beast, referred to as the dog man. There has been a spike in the number of sightings in the last two decades, like that of John Lyons in the summer of 2006. Well, we came out here probably about 1.30 in the morning. Past the schoolhouse and we went and turned around farther down the road. We sat there for, I guess, it's 30, 35, 45 minutes. We start hearing noises in front of us, behind us and over to our, our left. Go, go, go! It wasn't a deer, you know, it wasn't a bear, it wasn't pretty much anything else. We think that was the dog man. Most eyewitness accounts, like Lyons, lack supporting evidence. However, Bambinek and Young have found something. I don't believe it's in this sawgrass. Look, something's been eating it. Nothing eats that stuff. It was nine feet long and six feet wide and had a trail coming in both ends center of that bed, all the sawgrass had been eaten right down to the ground almost. What could be eating that? It ain't going to eat that stuff. Cut its mouth all to pieces. Because of the sharp saw-like serrations on the blades, dense beds of sawgrass can be dangerous to navigate through as the blades easily cut flesh. Consequently, Sawgrass beds in Wisconsin generally do not harbor animals of any size. But there are more impressions made by something large and heavy. And inside of it were footprints in the sawgrass, and they were like 18 inches long. Step there from there, that's, that's at least four feet. There appears to be what I believe are biped footprints, especially on the trail coming in. You can see where it stepped over the sawgrass. We do have a lot of wildlife in the area, deer and bear, 
But uh, deer aren't going to make a bed like this. They're going to have scattered you know, two, three feet apart. This is this is either something very big or something clustered together. With daylight fading and an impending storm approaching, they find one more piece of possible evidence, a strand of hair. This tangible clue will be examined in the lab when they return. It was a beautiful day like today in the fall. Instead of taking the freeway through Elkhorn and go home, I got off on Highway 11 just for the ride. Marv Kirschnick is a Wisconsin artist. As I approached this one farm area, I saw something standing uh, behind a fallen tree. I looked out through the window and I saw an object standing behind this fallen tree. And I thought at first it was uh, like a large dog, but the size was just too great for it to be a dog. And as I'm looking, I noticed that this creature noticed me, and he was kind of moving and rummaging a little bit. He stopped and he looked at me, and we made eye contact, and we just looked at each other. I looked around, there's nothing, so I just drove off. Kirschnick not only drew a rough sketch of the creature he saw, but has also filled his home with intricate sculptures and artworks based on his encounter. This is one of my pieces that I created to eliminate any doubt or fears that I had about this creature. I made the creature, I put myself into him so that I would be more relaxed with uh, what I saw. Kirschnick's rendering looks canine, with one big exception, the human-like hands. Kirschnick has also agreed to take a polygraph test. There's nothing that anyone can say to change my mind, there's nothing that anyone can do to make me not believe that this creature is real. Oh, I'd take any test. Okay, if you want to lean forward and put your arms straight out, okay. Polygraph expert Sergeant William Mackey, a member of the American Polygraph Association, conducted Kirschnick's test in strict accordance with that organization's rules. Regarding your statement about seeing that creature, do you intend to answer each question truthfully? Yes. Whether Kirschnick will show evidence of deception remains to be seen. Are you lying about seeing an upright hairy creature standing by that fallen tree? No. But not every eyewitness account is a good candidate for polygraph testing. We heard yelling and screaming from the front, so my mother and I walked to the front yard to see what was going on. In 1977, Milwaukee eyewitness Kim Del Rio was only seven years old when she claimed to see the beast. We saw, as well did several neighbors, the woman across the street clutching her child to her, about a four-year-old kid, like this close and yelling, help, go away, go away. And what she was yelling at was this unusual animal going across her front lawn. To this day, my mother simply refers to it as that dog thing. All you have to do is just close your eyes and take a few comfortably deep breaths. Time can fade or change memories, especially those of children affecting the quality of a polygraph test. However, hypnosis may reveal hidden memories. Del Rio agreed to be hypnotized by Milwaukee area hypnotist Jerry Calvi to help bring back a more conclusive memory of the event. And this thing's walking across her lawn and she's yelling at it to go away. 